Hey folks, welcome back to uh, another Excel Micro uh, broadcast. This is your host, Michael Amadio. Uh, joining me as always is my colleague, Ernie Martinelli. Um, today, we are going to be focused on email encryption. And if it is, uh, if TLS is standard enough, if this is something meant for you, for a compliance industry, regardless, if this is something uh, that you should now be considering as part of your next generation type of security, multi-layered security. And uh, we'll touch on a couple of case studies as well. Ernie, welcome back. Yep, thank you. Good to have you as always. So our agenda today, uh, we're going to be touching on some of the challenges with uh, when you're sending sensitive information through email. Uh, really, one of the main ones that we'll touch on is always going to be that, that human factor, of course. And just ways that you can start to enhance your overall email communications. So think about, you know, from your brand perspective, how you can not only protect yourself, but protect your customers and show that you are taking that extra step with securing their sensitive information. Uh, and as mentioned, it is not just for compliance industry. It's not just meant for the, the HIPAA regulated or fit in the regulated type of industry. And we'll touch on a few case studies of that. Uh, there's multiple solutions as well. So what is the right solution for you, for your customer? Is this something that you need for additional layers of security? Is this something that you need for compliance reasons? Uh, so we'll touch on a few security offerings and, uh, and we'll make sure that you are uh, provided any kind of updates or information from your dedicated account manager here. Uh, any questions that you have throughout today's broadcast, just post them in your control panel, what you see, uh, and we'll make sure that our account managers reach out to you offline and have more of that one-on-one. -on -one. So before we dive in, uh, Excel Micro, we're part of J2 Global, based out of California. Uh, J2 Global, fantastic company. They have two divisions, their digital media and cloud services. Uh, we obviously fall below their cloud services. Uh, and as Excel Micro, we are a distributor of cloud security solutions, email security, archiving, encryption, which we're obviously touching on today. We do endpoint protection and DNS as well. A little bit of hosting if you want to consider Google Apps or uh, G Suite, uh, more of that email hosting that we can offer and bundle together with some security. So a few things to really ask yourself. How do you send sensitive information today? Or how are your customers sending sensitive information? Do they have or do you even know if they have something built in? for a do not send policy? Is this something that they know that I can't send to somebody through email because maybe it has a, a social security number? Do they have to go through those added steps of thinking? Or uh, think if they, need, if they need to send sensitive documentation over a contract that needs to be signed. An SMB may not have the money to put out for something like a DocuSign uh, where they can send those images or those documents digitally and have someone apply a signature, that path still needs to go over encrypted as well. So are they sending what, through a carrier or getting same day mail, FedEx overnight, getting a signature that way, even if there's passwords needed, someone, you're sending over a login to a solution. You may need to reset someone's password and send that over to them manually. That's sensitive information. You need to really understand uh, what is and what should not be sent out there, especially with email being that, that primary method of communication. Now. People don't want to send out their mail overnight or a few days mail mail, obviously. I mean, I have to preach to you guys that are on the line on, on, on the importance of email and what, how it's changed the world, really. But everybody wants it on demand. I want it right now. I, I, my customer isn't right down the street where I can drive to them. My customer is across the country, and I need to get something in their hands and it contains some sensitive information to close a deal. It contains some sensitive information about maybe a patient. Uh, it, it, it has something that needs to be there in real time and it needs to be protected. So you're gonna have a whole process built out internally where every time you onboard a new employee and quarterly you have to go through a whole nother training session to say, well, this is how you really need to send an email. It, you really, it's going to take you forever, and it always pushes that human error in there. We mentioned the human factor. Ernie and I, we've been, we have combined in this industry now, heck, I think 17 years. Yep. Um, we, we don't, we, we still question, okay, does this need to be sent out encrypted or not? We still need to use these tools. Uh, anyone really needs to, to really consider the information that they're sending out, and do you want to add that extra step, extra process? 
uh, and, and making sure that, okay, this is some sensitive information. Let me apply encryption to this. Or I already have TLS in, in place. I can just shoot it over. It, you, you really need to think uh, about what you're sending if you don't have something in place to protect you from either a breach or something getting in the wrong hands. So there are ways that you can enhance it, uh, obviously with encryption as we're talking about today. You need to protect that sensitive information. It's not just the financial records or the healthcare records that you're sending out. Uh, as mentioned, it can be those quotes or contracts. Heck, it can be someone's home address, their, their driver's license information. If you do business with people that work out of their home or if, you do, if, if they have an office out of their home, that contains sensitive information about them. That information needs to be protected if you're sending it through email. Even human resources, if you're onboarding a, a new employee, I mean, think about it with, with human resources, some of that information that's being sent or even internal human resources. Well, I mean, a prime example on the human resource side, you could be a, you know, a small five user company selling boxes. You're, you're hiring a new employee. You might be sending sensitive information to that person's Hotmail, Gmail account. That's not a situation where your opportunistic TLS will kick in. Those service solutions may not actually adapt to that. So it's really important to note that even in a situation like that where you generally don't have a compliance need, you should be sending that information encrypted. That user may send information back to you as well. And you want to keep that locked down so that information does stay protected. Show the new employee right off the bat that you're protecting their information because you need that tunnel to remain encrypted. It doesn't contain some sensitive personal identifiers or information about them. Now, you also look at some of this and you think, well, okay, I'm not going to be one that's going to get affected by, say, uh, a compliance regulation, or I may not get a data breach because I'm such a small company here. I'm someone that's not a target for a data breach. But that's obviously not true. And I think it's really important to note, looking at these numbers, that SM, uh, SMBs are prime targets now. I mean, 43% of the industry now that these hackers are going after 43%. I think the big number here, that the most scary one is that 60% of SMBs don't survive cyber attacks nowadays. If you look at in the, in, every day in the news, you see a new data breach. Lord and Taylor just happened this week, big one here. I'm sure you don't hear about the small ones, the 5, 10, 20 user companies that have shut down for these reasons. They're not newsworthy, unfortunately. But if you're seeing, you know, we're seeing two, three, four companies a week now with, you know, millions of user data breach. Obviously, big companies have the resources to be able to survive these kind of situations. SMT, S, SMBs don't have those kind of resources. I mean, look at that 879K. That's the average cost of a cyber attack situation where there's, there's an outbreak. So really, it's we need to focus in on protecting these small SMBs. Absolutely. Great numbers. Eye-opening. Other things you need to consider, where is the company located? As you can see, there are regulations in place for certain states that if you are sending personal information, if you're sending driver's license numbers, credit card information, passwords, home addresses, as mentioned, you do need to meet regulations for those states. So the solution now becomes not just that added layer of security, but it becomes more of a necessity for certain customers. I think it's also important to note, obviously we're focusing on a lot of US with the state regulations here. It's important with the GDPR stuff coming online in Europe, if there's any interactivity with those kind of users, that is very regulated and it will insist upon having that data be controlled and where is that going to go? So I think that's very important to note as well, not just here in the States and maybe in North America, we also have to worry about the entire world and how we're moving that data around. Great point. Absolutely. So looking at some of the things that we've already shown and, and the reasons why, okay, my customer or, or heck, I'm not in healthcare, I'm not in finance, uh, I'm not in a regulated industry or I'm coming under some sort of investigation. Uh, I'm an email security and endpoint security distributor. Uh, why do I need email encryption? I already have TLS. Is that something that I don't need anything more of TLS encryption? I think it's really important to note in this scenario that most email security solutions, first of all, do opportunistic TLS, which means if the sending, the person receiving has the ability to receive TLS, yes, it will send that way. However, if it doesn't, it will send that unencrypted. You could indeed, of course, set that to enforce TLS. However, there's a good chance that a lot of the folks you're sending to just can't receive those messages. I, I think a really important point here to make is Excel Micro, a great example. 
you know, company, distributor, email security. We have no compelling compliance reason necessary to use encryption. However, if you dig just a little bit deeper and look at how Excel Micro does, of course, you know, we bill our customers. So now we're sending sensitive billing information back and forth. You know, maybe somebody in our support team, they're sending a password out. You know, we don't want to send that unencrypted. You know, I could be working with a customer receiving user lists, data information, stuff that needs to be purged from the system. Again, that should not be data that goes out there. Again, I have no compliance reason or mandate to do so, but the responsible thing, of course, is to send that data encrypted to ensure the customer information is preserved, billing information is, pre is preserved. So I, I think we're a prime example of a company that you wouldn't naturally think, hey, you know, that they need encryption. We utilize and decided to implement the ZIC solution. Um, we looked at it long and hard, and, and of course, the important thing is, as Mike had mentioned earlier, we have almost 17 years of combined experience. We, we took a look at key terms and stuff like that, anything that has to do with passwords, billing information, all those keywords are triggered automatically on our back end. We don't have to overthink the process or experience a human error situation. These are going to process automatically from Excel Micro's perspective and get sent out. That's key, what you just said, automatically. What, what did we say earlier? Industry experts, anyone, they don't know when to press encrypt and when not to press encrypt. Absolutely. Because of policies that are now built into solutions like that. Lexicons. And what a lexicon is, it's a predefined term. It's, it's something that will trigger something to go out of grips with. Us, yes, we looked at key words such as uh, confidential, pricing, password. And any time that we had those in, our, in, in an email, that triggers out that message to go out and encrypt it. So we do not, we, we almost, we, we remove the human factor. Asset. Absolutely. And I think it's really important to note, you know, if I'm sending out a quick password for, for a major partner of ours and, you know, they need a quick password, I, you know what? I still might forget. It might be the end of the day, it might be 4, 30, 5 o'clock, been here for 10, 12 hours already. You know, I, the, the, having that safety net of the solution being able to catch that for me is is excellent. I can rely upon the solution to do its job for me. Now, each solution obviously is going to meet certain needs, but there is a checklist that you should ask yourself. What information are you sending out or are your customers sending out in your email? Are they sending out sensitive information to a third party? Um, are they sending, if you need to put some sort of training manuals in place for them so they know what and what not to send, what to and what not to send. Uh, the solution that you're using for security for them doesn't have this already built in. Is it something that you can add a la carte? Is it something that you can upgrade to? Uh, there's a lot out there that, again, will meet your needs. A key to email encryption is making sure that you do have control over the outbound uh, routing of your mail. Uh, so that way you can build these policies and then they will go out encrypted through that solution that, that would be best fit to meet your needs. And of course, there's always, you know, the regulatory compliance or if they're located in a certain state, um, they need to consider some sort of email encryption as well. So Excel Micro, we do offer, uh, as you know, as I already mentioned, we use Zix, but we offer a few others. Uh, Mindcast, they have a, a solution called Secure Messaging. This uh, will meet your compliance needs and also you can customize this any way you need to with keywords and lexicons. It is an add-on to their email security or their email security with archiving offering. Uh, Proofpoint, they also have an email encryption solution. Now, this is available as part of their advanced or their pro package. So if you're using their business edition and you want to upgrade uh, to advanced, you would immediately be able to take advantage of the email encryption, and the pro would then add archiving as well as that encryption. Uh, Reflection, they uh, also have a solution called RTC Encrypt, which can be added on to their general security, and Zix. Uh, Zix is a, a solution that can be added on to any email security solution that you're careful using right now. The requirements for Zix, you need to have uh, control, obviously, over your outbound, register domain, and email. Uh, from there, you'll have the ability to launch Zix and customize your experience, just as we did here uh, with certain keywords. Or you could use, of course, the uh, pre-built lexicons and any other policies. Uh, one thing to mention about Zix, what they do have is a Zix directory which has, I believe the last number I saw was over 30 million active people in the directory, meaning that uh, if I am using Zix and the person I'm sending to also is using Zix, then that entire message will remain encrypted from sender to recipient, um, but the recipient will not need to log into a secure portal to view that message and reply back to it. Uh, what I'm gonna do for everyone after this, I'm gonna shoot you a message over 
just so you can see what the experience is like to receive a message uh, from someone uh, that's sending it through Zix. Um, and feel free to reply back if you like as well. Uh, also wanted to mention that another solution that we proudly distribute is Fuse Mail. And Fuse Mail email security solution will soon be launching Encrypt Smart. You'll be able to add that on to your Secure Smart or your Secure Smart Suite account with them. So in summary, Ernie, is email encryption for the compliance companies or purpose industry only? Absolutely not. We've seen a lot of the examples in this particular scenario that companies that you wouldn't think would need that actually do to keep that data from being compromised or getting out there. So we're telling people to spend more money. How can they save money by spending money? Well, I mean, I think it's important knowing, going back to those numbers. Yes, it might cost a few more dollars a month to add encryption to your services. But looking at a small SMB situation, 60% won't survive a single data breach. I mean, that's a very telling number. Is it worth the company versus spending a few more dollars a month for that, basically that insurance policy to make sure those situations don't happen and you have a solution that will protect you against these situations? So I'm currently using Proofpoint or FuseMail and I want to add email encryption and I, and I need to spin up, you know, either a, say a proof point account or a six account. How quick can I get that done? Spinning up some of these accounts can take can take minutes. I mean, from the, the simplest point of, you know, when you set up an encryption account, you could always do the simple thing of using the Outlook plugin, utilizing the simple term in a subject line, such as encrypt or confidential. Setting up a, a few key terms, you would think that would take significantly longer, but most of these solutions also have libraries available of terms. You know, so if you, you know, are in a compliance industry, HIPAA, FINRA, there's going to be libraries available. But also if you're not, um, there's going to be other key terms such as sales terms are going to show up in these libraries as well. So even if you don't necessarily have time to customize or set it up and you want to do a quick immediate rollout, it's just a matter of selecting a library that's going to trigger those words. So it does feed into a lot of things that we've touched on, especially in 2018 and you know, the close of 2017. The next gen attacks, the next gen threats, phishing, ransomware, data breaches, DLP, really looking at security as a whole. We obviously have always highlighted a lot with just email security and spam and virus protection, but it's involved so much more. You do need to really take those extra steps, whether it would be protecting an endpoint, protecting your DNS. Uh, having a, 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 a better host, uh, but it's really looking at your email as a whole, too, and thinking about the reasons why it's important to start archiving, why it's important to start encrypting and protecting sensitive information, and not just protecting yourself from those new threat inbound threats. So, great session, Ernie. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, important to note it's a proactive approach that we want to take here. For sure. And it, it's you need to be proactive this, this day because they, we've, we've seen on previous sessions of ours how sophisticated threats are now and how often they're coming. We talked about toolkits that hackers are now buying on the open market market for next to nothing to be able to infiltrate a network, to be able to, to breach a network and gather some sensitive information. So yes, it is being proactive. So if, if you have any questions, hey, be proactive, call us. <laughs> call our number 877-466-7726. Uh, Feel free to talk to any representative here. Uh, if you already have a dedicated account manager, absolutely reach out to them. If you have additional questions about some of the information we talked about today, you wanted to look at some case studies uh, for you know reasons why you may need email encryption. We do some, have some of those available from some of our vendors, um, and we'll be happy to help. So, Ernie, thanks as always. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.